שלום, איתנו נמצא פיטר ג'וזף, הקולנוען והבמאי שיצר את סרטי הציידגייסט ויצר את תנועת הציידגייסט שמקדמת שינוי חברתי-כלכלי עולמי. סרטי הציידגייסט היו מהסרטים הפופולריים ביותר בתולדות האינטרנט, ופיטר איתנו כאן לענות על כמה שאלות בנוגע לטבע של התנועה. היי פיטר. הלו. In form has about a thousand chapters across 70 countries and basically we're all working together to try to bridge some differences about economic problems that are working its way across the world social destabilization unemployment debt crisis environmental destabilization and this community is attempting to bring new sustainable ideas to the forefront to basically revolutionize economy as we know it hence revolutionize human values as we know it so we can try to create a new way of life you know and it's a grassroots movement with that basic basic premise okay now the first zeitgeist movement was uh, was released in 2007 movie right by yeah. you as a, as a performance piece you are a musician and an artist what leads you as a musician and as an artist to take to take up such a cause <coughs> as you know changing Honest, the global system sure well the, i my initial intention with the first film wasn't To create a movement per se, it was certainly a, a, an intention of revolution. It was an intention of a train of thought that'd be different than what the current zeitgeist as it's defined uh, dictates in the modern world. Uh, but it really wasn't until the second film that the pressure of the community that saw these films came to me, and I started to feel the need for my own purposes and because everyone else asked for it as well. To figure out what we could do as a community, whether it was a grassroots movement, whether it was a action of some kind, whether it was a protest, so to speak. So the last two films are really a representation of me trying to figure out in my own world what solutions may be for many of the global problems out there. And from that point is when the movement kind of, kind of materialized itself. I can't say I started anything per se. I would say I was an initiator of something that resonated with the general community and then it birthed into what we have today. Okay. Now, your timing was excellent. I mean, it was a lucky coincidence or perhaps the spirit of the times that the first movie was released just before the start of the global financial crisis. And then each movie was released, you know, prior or following an escalation in the crisis. That's true. That's true. It's funny you point that out. I've been accused of a lot of things as being an insider of the system as though I would know these things that other people shouldn't know. But if you, if you take a calculation perspective, if you look at say the global debt process, so money created out of debt, interest charged upon it as depicted in the first film, as, ex as expressed, excuse me, expanded upon in the second film, it's very easy to see that we are going to have uh, many different failures uh, through government, through corporations, through individual debt crises. It didn't take a lot of ingenuity to figure that out, but uniquely uh, within, I believe, three months after the release of the second film in 2009, Uh, excuse me, 2008, we had that massive first drop-off in the U.S. and Western economies, which was oddly poetic, but it was great to see, uh, in a certain sense, how these causal elements could be pointed out. It uh, removed a lot of the mystery for the general public as to why. So rather than blame the politicians, rather than blame the traditional notions of blame that we see, it began to be systemic. People said, well, what's wrong with the system? And that's my big point, is the system is failing. The system is the problem. not any poli political organization or, or general ideology that we come to think of. Yes. Unlike in the movies where uh, some of the movies claim that uh, uh, international bankers have taken hold of the economic and social system of the world, you're claiming it's not the bankers, it's the system, it's a systemic fault. The bankers are a consequence. The bankers are there. The financial interests are at the helm, what I call the ownership and investment class. They are a natural outgrowth of the basic premise of what the market economy basically is. And they are in control, they are there, but we have to remember that it's not the they as a causal point. It's not they as some manifestation that comes out of nowhere that suddenly, like, like God or aliens, they're suddenly in a hold of everything. No, they are products of the system. They're victims of the culture that's been created by the model of economics that we have. So if you want to change the they, we don't pose blame upon them per se. We look at what supports their values and we figure out that yes, the system has to go before we can, we can pose any form of blame on the individual. As far as I'm concerned, there's no blame to be made on any individual 
for any reason, because yeah. we're all victimizations, we're all victim consequences of the culture we're born into. Yeah. Now, the claims of the Zeitgeist movement and the Zeitgeist films are extreme. You've been called extremist, propagandist, mm. and other kinds of claims. What do you have to say about such claims that is well, it doesn't made against you? Well, it doesn't surprise me if you look at the history of any political or economic activism uh, or any type of philosophical activism, it goes against the status quo the knee-jerk reactions of the general public, not to mention those that uphold the true power, meaning the politicians or the major news agencies, uh, very often those are their first reactions. So, so you're subversive, you're a conspiracy theorist, you're, you're whatever people want to think of. And I've, e I've even had some critics go on to say that I support a terrorist concept, which is even more unbelievable, but it doesn't surprise me. And as the movement gains traction, uh, and as the global awakening continues, a lot of this rhetoric will continue, unfortunately. So I just kind of I maintain a, a good patience with it and just keep promoting the positive ideas that I do. Now, looking forward towards the future and considering the Occupy movement and you know, all the protest movements around the world, how, where do you see us going? Where do you see the system heading? Do you see us heading in a good direction, in a, in a, in a positive change, or do you see heading towards a catastrophe? It's a mix. It uh, depends on what level you're looking at. I, I see, unfortunately, with the debt crisis, the unemployment crisis, and the pending energy crisis, established energy crisis, uh, I see a lot of upheaval and problems and disarray and uh, periodic forms of what you call collapse and, of course, insurrections, such as the Occupy Movement. The Occupy Movement didn't surprise me at all. In fact, I foreshadowed it a little bit in the end of my third film about five or six months before the Occupy movement emerged, I had this depiction of this global awareness against the financial system. So with all of those negative things that are occurring, there's always the pressure to figure out what the solution may be. So simultaneously, you have all of these wonderful organizations, you know, the Zeitgeist movement aside, all these other amazing organizations and concepts and green revolutions even happening in certain corporate establishments, even though, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't even come remotely close to what's necessary. But there is something happening where people are beginning to think more outside of the box. And as with any societal problem, you end up with people that see it, they experience it, and they want to change it. So there's a biosocial pressure that you would call it. And all we can hope is that instead of seeing even more suffering and collapse, you get another subculture of people that are willing to kind of step up and really push for absolutely new groundful changes that can stop this before it gets to that point. You know what I mean? So there's two factors happening, which one's negative, one's positive, but they kind of go in tandem because we really don't change as human beings until we're kind of forced to, as history has shown. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you.